Now, the real question, though, is actually how many milliliters is represented by the 10 drops and how much drug, how much amoxicillin is present in the 10 drops when you give it to the patient. Hello, this is Dr. Damkwa. And if this is your first time here and you'd like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's get right to it. So this question was actually asked by one of our subscribers and it's an interesting reconstitution calculation question. So I felt by solving it, it to be of tremendous benefit to the entire community. So the question says, the label of a dry powder for constitution into pediatric drops states that when 12 milliliters of purified water is added to the powder, 15 milliliters of a pediatric suspension containing 50 milligrams of amoxicillin per milliliter results. How many milliliters should be added to prepare the dose of amoxicillin in each 10 drops if the dropper delivers 20 drops per milliliter? The child has a body surface area BSA of 0.4 meters squared and the dose of the drug is based on 50 milligrams per meter squared of BSA. Now, there's a lot to unpack in the question, but we can start off with the governing equation for reconstitution calculations. And the equation says, final volume is equal to the volume of the diluent plus powder volume and we'll call that PV, powder volume. PV is powder volume. So the thing about the dry powder is no matter what volume of diluent, you, the, the powder volume, that is the contribution the powder makes to the entire volume will stay the same. So we are going to start off by calculating what that is using the label directions. So from the label, it says you add 12 milliliters of diluent, which is purified water, and you end up with a final volume of 15 milliliters. So the 15 milliliters will go right here where it says final volume. And then the volume of diluent here is 12 milliliters. And then the powder volume is what we're looking for. So we put a variable there. Let's call that X. So when we solve for X, that will give us the powder volume. So X is going to be equal to 15 milliliters minus 12 milliliters and that gives three milliliters so the powder volume is three milliliters now it's important to mention that when you follow the label directions and you add the 12 milliliters of purified water you do end up with 15 milliliters final volume and that volume has a concentration of 50 milligrams of amoxicillin per milliliter now that's important because the question is asking us to calculate the volume in milliliters of water that needs to be added and the implication there is that your final concentration will change once the volume of diluent changes. Now, the real question, though, is actually how many milliliters is represented by the 10 drops and how much drug, how much amoxicillin is present in the 10 drops when you give it to the patient. So the next thing we are going to do is we are actually going to convert the 10 drops to milliliters using the 20 drops per ml conversion factor. And so we can set up a quick proportion we will say that 20 drops makes one milliliter. So if you have 10 drops, then how many milliliters would I give you? And so we can go ahead and solve for X. So X is going to be equal to one milliliter times 10 drops divided by 20 drops. the drops cancel out and you end up with 0 0.5 milliliters. So now that we've found the 0 0.5 milliliters, the next thing that we need to also find is actually how much drug will be present in the 0 0.5 milliliters, which represents the 10 drops. And the way we're going to do that is make use of the patient's body surface area, which is the 0 0.4 meter squared and also the normalized dose, which is 50 milligrams per meter squared. So we'll go ahead and take the 50 milligrams per meter squared and multiply that by the patient's body surface area, which is 0 0.4 meter squared. The meter squared cancel out and that gives you 20 milligrams. 
So if you go back to the equation, we do know the powder volume because we just calculated that to be 3 ml and we're looking for the volume of diluent. So we still need to know what the final volume is so that we can actually use this equation to find the volume of the diluent. So to determine the final volume, we also need to know the actual quantity of amoxicillin dry powder that we have. And the way we do that is to make use of the original concentration, which was the 50 milligrams of amoxicillin per milliliter and the final volume that that gave us. Because if you multiply concentration and volume, you're going to end up with the quantity. So what that will look like is you have 50 milligrams per milliliter. And once again, that's coming from this concentration. And then we multiply that by the volume, which is 15 milliliters. So if you do the math, that will give us 750 milligrams. So we have 750 milligrams of amoxicillin dry powder. And then we know the actual amount of amoxicillin that should be in the 10 drops. So we know 20 milligrams in 0 0.5 milliliters. So what that would imply then is to determine the final volume, we can use a quick ratio. We would use the 20 milligrams in 0 0.5 milliliters because that's actually the desired concentration that you are looking for. And then we'll say if we do have the 750 milligrams, which is the total quantity, then what would be that volume? Okay. So we solve for Y. So Y is going to be equal to 0 0.5 milliliters times 750 milligrams divided by 20 milligrams and that gives us 18.75 milliliters so this 18.75 milliliters is actually the final volume under these conditions okay so we can go back and put that into the original equation so here our final volume is going to be 18.75 milliliters and that's going to be equal to the volume of diluent we not know so we can use a variable we'll say that is z and then plus the powder volume which we calculated to be three milliliters so that's three so we can go ahead and solve for the unknown which is z so z is going to be equal to 18.75 now this is milliliters minus the powder volume which is also three milliliters that should be equal to 15.75 milliliters. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you'd like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.